presenting Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Oh, we're so happy to have our wonderful guest, Linda Hack, who uh, is the, well, among many things, an expert in light language, and she's going to talk about that. But also, she has her husband here, and hopefully, he will talk about his new book called The World of Psychics, Mediums, and Spirits, A Look Inside from the Outside. Love it. So, anyway, um, and Michelle Gray, I love her. Hello. She's from Hello. Canada. She's from Canada, I said. She's from Ca- Canada, eh? Mm-hmm. So hey, I, from I Canada. I like the way y'all are portrayed on uh, South Park. It's so funny. Hey. <laughs> hey. Funny. Uh, but anywho, uh, all right, so let's talk about Linda first. Linda is, you know, she's a published poet. She's the author of Channeling of September 11th, 2001. I've read that. It's pretty cool. Available on Amazon. And she's currently, you. I didn't know you're co-authoring this book with David. That's cool. And, of course, you've been an active channel since uh, 2014. Um, after, you know, coming out of your comfort zone. We all know what that's like, right, Michelle? Oh, yes. <laughs> and of course, then she began her light language with others, and uh, in doing so, that's when her channel abilities uh, just in, unfolded so much. And this all started this whole light language thing at the age of twelve. Uh, you started speaking in tongues. I remember this story in, in church, and you know, known in this modern day as light language, but then it was speaking in tongues. So now. Lynn is also an activator of all the Holy Spirit gifts through light language. It's very, very powerful stuff. Uh, and if yes, you uh, have point on your path to receive, you know, she has the ability to channel all things spirit and out of our earth world to universal beings, including Eric. I remember uh, you downloaded light language, or uploaded, uploaded light language to me, and I felt this really cool buzzing in my crown chakra right on top of my head. But anyway, I will, um, I will uh, give the floor to you, but I do need David's, so we can unmute him eventually. I do need David's number. Um, I, don't, I don't know. He's just listening to the radio show. He didn't call in, I don't think. Oh, well, David, if you want to call in, do so, but then um, uh, text Linda so I can get the first six digits. You know, you don't want to display your thing on. on, uh, But, okay, go ahead, Linda. Tell us your fascinating uh, story. Okay, well, you pretty well covered most of it. Um, I was 12 years old when I was filled with the Holy Spirit um, in uh, Los Angeles at the Amy McPherson Four Square Church, which is the Pentecostal church which at that time, speaking in tongues was, well, even before then, but as a 12-year-old, I was aware of because I had heard it in the church, but I had never, I mean, as a 12-year-old. And the day that I got touched, the day that I got touched was really strange because I was sitting next to my grandmother. It was a Wednesday evening service. And all of of this, pardon me? You remember that. That's amazing. Oh, it's You're vivid. Married. The whole thing is extremely vivid to me. Yeah. The most vivid part of it was that I was being called, and as a 12-year-old, I didn't quite understand why I was having all of this change in energy within my body. And, of course, I, couldn't, I would not have been known how to explain it as energy. I do now. But then, and then my grandmother, without words being expressed back and forth, touches my leg and says, it's okay. You're being called. It's time for you to go. And I looked at her like, whoa, man, is she reading my mind? (laughs) What did you you actually feel when you said your energy changed? I mean, you could say it in terms of what a 12-year-old would. Uh, Did you feel tingling somewhere? What, What exactly did you feel? I felt it in my heart. I, oh. My heart changed. My heart changed. It was like, it was like, um, almost like I softened, like like uh, Play-Doh or something, you know, after you've got it all nice and warm and it gets soft and mushy. Yeah. It, it, it kind of felt like that. It was just a, a, a strong physical change in my body. Um, 
And then once I stood up and started walking down to the front of the church, the tears began to run and they began to fall. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I got down into the front of the church, there were already people down there waiting. And the minister just kind of walks down the line, puts his hand on your forehead and um, he, he puts his hand on your forehead and the moment he touched me, and in the meanwhile, um, in the meanwhile, um, I'm, I go down. I just go straight down. I, I what do you literally mean? go straight down to, to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and when, I, when I came back to, I was speaking in tongues. Oh, did you totally pass out? Yes, I went I right out. Wow. No, I don't remember that. I just want to make sure that the rest of the audience. Okay, so then go ahead. Finish your story. Uh, really okay, cool so then so then I hang on just again. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Um I um I, I I came back to I was speaking in tongue. Um I lay there for a few minutes and then somebody helped me get up. And um I went back to my grandmother and sat down. And um, the next time we were in church, I began to speak in tongues again. And she said to me, no, 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 you're, you, you, I'll let you know when you can do that, you know? So then that's how I went home. I went back to San Diego. That was in Los Angeles. I went back to San Diego after the summer. No, never told anybody what happened. And it was just yeah. mine. And it wasn't, it wow. wasn't until I met channeling Eric and then I met um, Audie Heron that I had any idea oh, that it was something to share. I miss Audie and I miss Ryan so much. Yeah. Me Ryan, too. Ryan. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I okay. do. I, I miss them. Yeah. I, I miss them so, so bad. Um, but yet I don't because all I have to do is ask them and they're here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... Because I never yeah. had physical contact with the three of them at all, obviously. So mm-hmm. all the contact that I've really had with them has been a distance. Like with Ryan, it was always distance. He did a lot of dist- distance healing on me. It's very powerful that way. And, uh, um, and, and Adi, of course, he did do a lot of the group stuff. But Adi is the one that I told about the light language. And I, and I told him, I said, you know, I speak in tongues. And he goes, oh, my God. And I told him my story. And he goes, Linda. That's not just for you. If you were given that gift, that was a way, at that time, it was always considered gift, 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 gift. Now it's awakening to that which is ours. We all have the ability. Right. It's an ability. It's not a gift. And we call it the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Why why do you call it Um, that? um, I think because it's portrayed in the Bible as the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And let's face it, it's the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost to me is one, right? Right. And right. that it's portrayed in the Bible as the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what I learned, you know, as a child that I was sitting in church and then talking I mean, about it oh, around me. Um, no. So I think Spirit. that's why it goes that way and why, why people yeah. call it the gift of the Holy Spirit. And people have come up with some new ones right now. The last time I looked at it, I checked and I sent it out. Now they say there's 25 of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I, my heart and my intuition tells me that many of them were created, okay, because of leadership. And somebody's, you know, you can find these, these are all texts. You can find all of these in the Bible. And um, they've created them as gifts of the Holy Spirit as well. But the most common ones are um, the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, healing, Mm. working of miracles, prophecy discerning of spirits, speaking in tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Well, so, you know, I think it's really important to look for an alternative to what Christianity says, because a lot of people who are listeners have you know, been beaten down by um, not Christianity itself, but those believers in Christianity and judged for their different spiritual beliefs. So, you know, can, can you can you help us understand what it is outside of the realms of the Bible and Christianity? Is it like just an angel speak? Is it the word, the language of the Akashic records? I mean, what, how can you 
make it so that just it's not attached to Christianity for those um, well I do know that there are in in you know I, I have a, I have a couple pages and one of them is um, light language by Linda Lee and I have a lot of people on there that that are on my page that all Facebook. are speaking light language yeah and yeah. Um, like Carrie, our Carrie Menon, for instance, yeah. when she speaks her light language, it sounds very, very galactic. Um, I would sounds, say that she, yeah, has, yeah she, she, she yeah, she feels, she feels that, um, um, that I, I think she was told that the, um, that it was coming from her husband's higher self when she speaks the light language. Um, oh. But when she first began speaking it to me, it sounded very, very galactic. Um, well, what do you mean by that? Well, I know that when I have a galactic being channeling through me, okay, for first of all, the, uh, what I call higher sales, okay, and when I channel, say I have a client, and when I channel for that client, I, ch- I always began my sessions with channeling light language for them. And in most yes. cases, it comes from their higher Unless Ah. an archangel or somebody else steps in and tells me, right, you know, that uh, this is Archangel Michael or Raphael or, you know, anybody like that, which they will tell me if it is. If if I don't get that, then it's a higher self. And our higher self has lived many, 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 many lives in many, many different places. Earthly lives universal lives let's just use it that way universal oh, lives. Oh, yourself. I'm so disappointed in me Linda Michelle I'm just kidding go ahead <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god we need to put her in the remedial class next <laughs> lifetime but no I don't so, want to be in the remedial class when I die I'm going to go up to heaven and I'm going to sit my ass down in a bark a lounger and it's going to have to have um, you know cup holders for beer <laughs> Oh, and you're going to sit back and watch the all of us go through it again. Yeah, hell yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm doing a session, and because we've lived universal lives, oftentimes what will channel through me is what I would describe as a galactic lifetime that this particular person has lived, and oh. they have a message for their soul. So when hmm. I channel for them, my feeling is, that I am channeling a message to their soul that they have reached a point on the path that they are ready to receive. Oh. And that that message is very important to them. And the reason it comes in a language that our mind does not understand is so that we cannot pick it apart because that's what we oh, do. We're yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. We're like little monkeys picking fleas off our body because oh, we yeah. don't understand the words. Yes. If we I, understood I, I, all I, I, the I, words, we I'm would try to categorize you. them. Yes. Oh my God. And that analyze so- them. Okay. So, what if you upload light language to somebody who's not ready for it? Is that possible? And if so, what happens? Yes, that is possible. And because I'm uploading, or because uploading is going on, all right, yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean that when they get done with my session, they're going to go out and start speaking light language, or they're oh, suddenly yeah. going to start channeling, or they're suddenly going to be you know, um, prophesizing or, or any of those things. What it means is that if they, if they, from what I understand is the energy of the light language that comes through is going directly to the soul. So the mind doesn't have to be ready for it. Number one. And number two, if they haven't reached the proper point on their path and they have received it, it's just going to hang out there in ether. And then all of a sudden that here it comes when they reach that point. That's, that's, so awesome. So, um, you know, you, some some people think that mathematics and there's so much math, like in the pyramids and all that stuff, is kind of like the universal form of communication. Um, how does that relate, if at all, to to light language? Well, I can't get into the mathematics end of it unless you want me to ruin your whole show. <laughs> anyway, well, um, awesome. no, it's. I, well, do, I, mean, I, do, I guess math is energy. Yeah, it's, it's all energy. It's all energy. Yeah. Okay, so let's get back to, back to where Grandma says, no, 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 no. I'll let you know when you can use that speaking yeah. in tongues. Yeah. What she, ta- what she taught me was 
that that was a personal prayer between me and God. Yeah. And many people feel that, and there are scriptures in the Bible that will tell you that that's what it is. It's a direct channel. And trust me, when I was younger, raising children and going through strife and going through all the crap you go through when you're married to the wrong man and you're raising children on your own and blah, blah, blah. There were many, many times that I was called to prayer, but I didn't know what to ask for. My mind had no idea how to pray. Yeah. You know? You get, when you're in that point, you just go, oh, my God, please help me. I can't do this anymore, right? Well, I can speak in my tongue, and I knew that I was saying the right prayer. I was praying to God in that tongue. That's what my mind felt. That's what my heart felt. Yeah, and source listened. Source understood. Yes, and the thing about it, yes, and the thing about it is, is that, other people can use it personally. Just just because you're speaking in tongue doesn't mean that you have to share it with everybody that you meet. Oh yeah. I do know. I do know that I can speak in light language. I can do a public thing like I I do do, and I will have people contact yeah. me and say, "Oh my God, you know, um, I started speaking in light language the next day, or I started speaking in light language twenty minutes later, oh. or I started, and I get these little messages like that." But that doesn't happen to everybody. So those people that are on my page, I encourage them to share their light language because my light language may not be the light language that is going to awaken another person, but their light language just might be the one that does. And that is what I'm here for. I'm here to awaken as many souls as we can, okay? Mm. And and by doing so, by sharing my light language and activating, if they're ready to be activated, I will activate them. That's so cool. All right, so tell me what uh, things that light can light language like um, activate the, or help the pineal gland? Can it activate your DNA? I mean, can can you tell me kind of specifics on on what this wonderful tool can be used for? It can be used for all those things. It's very, very powerful. It can be used for healing. Um, a person who is speaking light language need only to do what we do when we go into meditation, set a intention. Set an intention to receive healing. Set an intention to receive the ability to channel. Set, an, set your intention for that which you were seeking in your life at that time, and your light language can help you achieve that. Um, and you can do it come for, to yourself, me, for yes? yourself. And other people, and right, right. And, and so it, it, when you talk about healing, are you talking about physical healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing, or all, all of the of above? It. Okay, all good. the above. Okay, go ahead. All the Sorry. above. If yeah. your heart is breaking and you're crushed, you know, you can sit down and you begin to pray, or you can you can play somebody else's light language, and you can receive. If you set your intention to be calmed, you set your intention to see what it is you are supposed to see to see what it is that you were supposed to learn. We all know that we go through these relationships because they're all teaching tools. They're teaching tools for us. And it's how we respond to those moments of strife and stress and pain and even anger and how we handle that is how we grow. We don't always see it at the moment, but when we look back, we can see it. We can see that growth. So light language can help you through all of those times, can help you through... Um, healings. If you have a, a specific area of your body that needs to be healed, you can you can continually pray without ceasing. Is the word pray without ceasing? And right. I think with light language, yeah, and light language, you can you can speak like I can speak light language in my mind right now while I'm speaking to you. It's as though it has a total different line going. Yes. And God. when I'm doing my when I'm speaking, I can have a conversation with Eric at the same time I'm speaking light language. So wow. So tell me about your, well, I, I got two more questions. One is tell me about your relationship with Eric, and the other is how does one start speaking light language? But let, let's go ahead and start with. Um, um, by the way, Linda, um, can you write a little note to yourself? I would love for you and I, uh, you obviously, to do a, a, a YouTube and channel Audie and Ryan. That'd be cool. Anyway. Yes. Uh, yes. So, yes. yes, yes. I'm sorry. I'd, I'd be I'd be happy to do that. Okay, my relationship with Eric, how it began? Mhm. Yeah. Um, 
it began before I started channeling. And what happened was I received a phone call. I was living in Arizona at the time. Now I live in Florida where my family is, but I was in Arizona taking care of my mom and dad. So um, my, one of my daughters called me and said, mom, I'm really, really upset about her daughter who was a teenager at the time. And I am afraid she's going to hurt herself. Mm. So at being a mom, I did everything in my power to read that everything was really okay, blah, 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 right? So I get off the phone and for some reason was driven to type in the words childhood suicide. And when oh. I did, the very first thing that came up was your site. Yeah, that's weird. That's how I met Eric. And I began yeah. to read everything. I, I began to listen to your shows with Jamie. At that time, you were using Jamie. That's yeah. how I met him. To this day, that young lady is all grown up, and she's happy. She never hurt herself. She's healthy. Wow. A great great relationship. It was a tool that that, that Eric used to get me where I needed to go so that I could move into the next step of why I came here to be. And you guys played a part in that. So wait. So so how did you you help this this girl by doing what? By, By... Family Eric uh, advice to her or what? How did how did how did she get well? I guess I'm saying she was never sick. Her mom oh. was worried about her. Okay, oh. her mom was worried about her because her grades had gone down and she was in a state of depression. Once I made a connection with channeling Eric, she was fine. Weird. It was a it was a tool that was used to get me to channeling Eric. Okay, oh, and that's okay. how Eric worked. I get it. Finally, I'm you got it. it. Yeah. Um, so tell, that's tell how, me about how that's how Eric okay. works. That's how he works. I. You guys have been. You guys were so instrumental in me moving on that path, taking the next step, of oh, which I had no direction. I had no idea the direction that it was going to take me in. Mm. No idea. I didn't that either. Was the first step. I, you know, I felt like I was being dragged around by a 150-pound Doberman. Or at least I did not know where this this was taking me, and it was kind of weird for uh, surreal for this little old broken woman with a laptop, you know, in her lap, all alone in her den, to I don't know to go go through strange journey that I guess we are all on. So how how does one start? Did they just like okay, I'm going to start and then start uttering things? How, of course, you can help if they go to like by Linda Linda Lee, right? On Facebook, right? Or, yeah, right. they can go there. Now, okay. a lot of people, a lot of people are um, would come to me in the beginning when I first started sharing my light language in my Audie's Angels group. And anybody mm-hmm. who's listening to the show right now can go to my website and click on About Me, and they can read the entire story about all of this. So um, what a lot of people right after I did that in this small group of 20 people called Audie's Angels, I, those women were contacting me, um, uh, the women that were contacting me were um, asking me to teach them how to do it. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, well, how do I teach you? I was 12 years old, flying in a spirit and came up uttering, right? So how do I teach you? But since then, years later, years later, um, a lot of people out there do teach it. And I do believe that if a person sets their intention Um, they can, there's a couple different ways they can do it. They can invite the Holy Spirit into them and ask the Holy Spirit to fill them. They can, that's the next step. If they're, and you know what? You don't have to be religious religious to understand the Holy Spirit. That's different. To me, to me, to me, spirituality is in your soul. It's not in a brick and mortar building called a church. Okay. Yeah. That's my opinion. Exactly. Okay. But I understand that you can you can also do it by uttering. You can also do it by chanting. You can begin chanting, find some kind of chant that you like, and allow the chanting to go on, okay? Um, yes. 
And then if you feel the urge that the words begin to change, then let them change. And I've had people contact me and say, oh, my God, I, I'm doing it, but I'm only saying three words. And I keep repeating the same three words over and over again. And I'm like, that's okay. That's okay because yeah. the more you use it, it will begin to expand. Wow. And, the, and another thing about it, too, Elisa, is very, very strongly, this is the main reason why people do not achieve that goal is because, they think they sound stupid. They think people will fund them. I they know. think they're crazy. They oh. think that they're making it up. I it's called faith that. and trust. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You have to have faith and you have to have trust. Hmm. So two things. I would love for you to tell a little bit about David's book, but also is there any way that you can do a little uh, light language to help us, the collective, because, I mean, a lot of us are suffering from this whole pandemic thing, and we oh, need to a little healing here. So let's start okay. off with David's book. <clears throat> David's Sorry. book. Okay. And by being, a, by being a co-author, that's what he keeps telling me, I'm the co-author, because the book that oh, he's doing. Oh, in Texas terms. Oh, yeah. Hi. He's the world of psychics, mediums, and spirits, a look inside from the outside. He's the in. He's looking in from the outside. So first yes. of all, he's educating people on all the different aspects of spirituality and the spirit mediums. He does a great explanation. The book that he's doing, he wants for people who don't understand any of this. Um, and then the second half of the book, he's telling my story. He's telling how he has sat back as my husband and watched this whole thing evolve as a skeptic yeah. in the beginning but as convinced without doubt of its reality in our lives Mm. today. And it's going to be an excellent, excellent read. And um, I asked him if he would do it. He said he would love to come on the show with you and explain a lot more of it uh, when it's appropriate for you. No, okay. Just let's set something up. He he could give me some stuff. um, But that's interesting because I think it's really important for him to – speak in like this is how I saw things this is what I went through because it, it, it you know the the uh, reader can put the, themselves in his shoes because they are going on this journey too and they're afraid and they want David or somebody to hold their hand to walk through this and he does yeah. such an excellent job he does such an excellent job once you start reading it it's, it's hard to put down it really is you so. send me a Enough of it, so I can just uh, breeze through. It must burn five. Anyway, um, so yes. Can you do a little um light language for us to heal those on the show? And and what I what I would like everybody to do is I would like them to set their intention for that which they would like to receive from the light language. They can set you know they're one of the persons in your audience may be suffering right now from a migraine. Who knows? So. If they set their own intentions, they can set their own intentions for whatever it is that they would like to receive. I will ask the Holy Spirit to come through and um, to to help in any way that is being asked for. Okay? It is activation of DNA, activation of help with your channeling, any healing, yep. physical, emotional, spiritual, pineal gland, whatever. All the above. Yep. Okay. All the above. Oh. Whatever, no. they, whatever they, they are seeking at this time for themselves or the growth. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> you ready? This is the, uh, the Holy Spirit that is coming through me right now. Okay. Okay. Hey manahai la pakidi hai la boko di amalai kile e chiko shahama le di kisi ya to ko wamani mehena mahana amboko di ara ni di ya pahala en peki ya moko ya handa le hi se pati di ya moko shi amalai ya boko di ana hey manahai ya o ke shi abako ai la hai shukaba en da la boko di ara la hindo hi shaka e pe shan da la ba hai o su ko pare di ya and baby, the other car have a cousy, and be she a man in the yanda high. A belehaku tea up a calabahane, a bugu, and that is a big a hana be he she a man in the other color. And the little cotoanda had the kissy a manai. 
and they la pacoto diata abalai, and baby diata, and me usha, and then ah, a kea la bacaya to car, and then they are the halabacuti at the ziha, malahi yoko, the sea bacala bacuti under the behe ale, and diabaco, air sakaya, a matucuciata and mahi, and dihe bagalo, patu o shada bacaye, ebele izugosa, and madadi di apa halabacuti under car. And they have Kalabaku de Yaka Hapalako, a very day has the Yambogota Kaha, let the Kiki Yaka the Wo, a la Pahari de Yanta Halabaku. That's the people to write it here. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Wow. I mean, you can't make this stuff up, peeps. Okay, that is incredible. Wow. Thank you so much. I just, Thank you're welcome. And I just want everybody to know that his that is listening, that I feel as a very, very privileged human being to be a vessel that the light channels to me. Yeah, I'm just awesome. the vessel. I am not to be put on a pedestal. I am just the vessel. Yeah, I, I, I totally get that. And I, I know Michelle would get that also. All right, Linda, mm-hmm. Michelle, Eric, are you guys ready to take callers? Absolutely. Yes. All right, let's do this thing. Hang on. Uh, we have somebody from the 705 area code. Hi there. How are you doing? <laughs> Welcome to the show. Hello. Is that, uh, Alyssa? Hi. This yes. is Lorraine. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. <laughs> I didn't know. Uh, I'm Great. calling from uh, Innisfil, Ontario, Canada. Oh. oh. There we go. My name is no way! <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, in, I'm in London. I'm in London, in Ontario. London, Ontario. Yes. Nice. Cool. Nice. I have awesome. a good friend in uh, near London. Actually, I grew up with. Yeah. Wow. So oh, cool. Small. You're the Canadian. Go have it Yay! Yeah. Pardon me. Yeah, A. <laughs> exactly. a? Oddly enough, I don't say A very often. <laughs> no, you really don't. You don't. No, we don't. No. <laughs> but we are very polite. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So yeah, so um, I, I'm, um, I've become a friend of Alyssa's through a good friend of mine, Carol, who also lives in Innisfil. Um, and I've been wanting to, uh, call in because, um, my 20 year old son, um, uh, passed away on the 21st of April and mm. I'm missing him my so birthday. much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Um, mm. I'm really missing him. And I just, I feel in my heart, he's happy and he's healthy and whole it just thought maybe I don't know if I'd be able to to connect. Yeah. What's, what's his first Noah, name? Right? Noah. Noah. Yes, Noah. Noah. Yeah. And what is your first name again? Lorraine. Yeah, Lorraine. That's right. Yeah. He struggled Lorraine, just a lot. Gonna, yeah, I'm just um. <clears throat> Trying to pull in his energy here. Um, it feels like there's some healing that's going on. I can feel some um, some healing that he's going through. Um, because it's yeah. pretty fresh. It's pretty fresh, yeah. Um, but it, it was he like I keep getting the feeling of an accident, but not yeah. quite. Is that is yeah? That, that accident. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it yeah, I could totally see it was an accident. Um, we haven't gotten all the re- like the toxicology reports back and everything, but I I feel he accidentally cho- overdosed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That okay, makes that sense means, because yeah. it's an accident, but not quite. Oh, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I was getting um, the what, same thing, Michelle. Okay. Oh, good, Linda. Um. I was just going to say, I was just feeling that, um, and I'll explain kind of how this works, is sometimes when I'm channeling somebody that has passed away fairly recent, um, it's yeah. not that they're 
spirit is not right here with us because he's definitely here. The air is yeah. kind of a bridge. He creates yeah. a, oh. a pathway. So for me, it's like he's texting. He's on video chat. <laughs> So he's yeah. kind of over here in this other room here doing some stuff. But what I keep hearing is, I'm okay, Mom. I'm okay, Mom. I want you to know that I'm okay. And well, there's, did he have dogs that passed before him? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we had two, well, two dogs, uh, two, three, no, four cats. So we had lots of animals in our life, but not all at the okay. same time. But No, no, because he's bringing that forward as something that makes him really happy being oh. surrounded in the animal and he just okay. wants to let you know that um that's nice is there something something about his hair did he have something oh, got... specific about his hair he's like talking um, about his hair um so when i when he passed away that morning i was with him i kept stroking his hair and even at the at the funeral, it was an open casket, and I I kept touching his hair. I have a thing about his hair; he's got beautiful curly hair. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. That's it's it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. It's the yeah the closeness. He's really trying to express that, even though his body is not present, that closeness has not left. Yeah. His bond yeah, to I, you has not left. Yeah, I always feel that. Wow. wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's also, um, okay, um, Eric, okay, <laughs> like I'm getting both mm-hmm. of them both back and forth at the same time. Both of them are expressing that he's going to be communicating with you quite a bit. And okay. um, wow. this, is, this is a catalyst for a very big shift in your own life um, because you have an agreement and he's just, Eric and your son are putting energy around Elisa saying that we have work to do, much yeah. like Eric and his mom. So yeah, don't be surprised how this starts to change the life that you're leading and the journey that you will become very soonly aware that oh, you're was this, was this a part of it. Was it a spiritual contract um, yes. to, to yes. awaken the mom? Oh, wow. So there's a reason for yes. it. Yeah. All right, good. Yeah. All right, well, um, wow. I think, uh, Lorraine, maybe you need to book a session with Michelle because it seems like there's a lot of information that would be Yeah, free. that would be. Uh, okay, yeah, well, thank awesome. you. Thank you. Love you, Mom. Love you, Mom. Oh, oh Mom, I, I love you, Noah. I miss you, and I know you're okay. I know you are. I can feel it in my heart. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what he said. Mother, he goes, mother knows. He knows it. Yeah. 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 Mama knows. Know. Mama always know. Wow. That's so passionate. Oh, that's hard. Um, okay, we have somebody from the 215 area code. Hi there. How are you? Hi. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm all right. Um, my name's Brian. I uh, want to thank you first for doing everything that you're doing with your show and all that. Oh, uh, so it's much a great fun. thing. Fantastic. Thanks, baby. And I know it's I'm... not easy, and uh, like you no. say, it's a lot of work to do when you're going through a loss of someone. It's You're really, really stepping up and helping a lot of people. You don't know it. That's how I heal, you know. Yeah. So, Ron, you have a question for Eric, or you want to talk I, to a deceased? I, I do. I have, a, <clears throat> I have a question. I lost my, uh, my, do- my dog and my father. <laughs> My dog first, and then my father, and uh, I just would like to know if they're together, and if they're all right. What's your father's first name, and what's your dog's Jim, name? Jim, Jim, yeah, yeah. My yeah. dog's name is Duke, and my dad's name is Jimmy, James. Okay. okay. I, yes. Was, was Duke, uh, uh, sorry, Linda, you go ahead. Yeah, I, Duke was the big dog? Yes, he was. Yeah, long hair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Kind of shaggy, shaggy long hair, reddish brown, maybe. Yellow, yellow blonde hair. It was yellow lab. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're together. They're together. Oh. oh. How's my dad doing? He's doing great. And um, he's actually telling me that Duke, Duke, Duke yes. went first, right? Because Duke was it, waiting for him. 
Yes, yes, yes. Wow. He said that Duke was, wait, Duke was waiting for him. And I also see two other people that when he crossed over were there with him. Um, that would be his mom and his dad, I believe. Yeah. Wow. I think you're right. Yes, yes. I can see them the, as well. The, the, the day he died, well, the day he died, yeah, the day he died, I told him, I said, you go, you go now. You go and see Duke, and you go see your mom and dad. He was uh, dying of cancer, and uh, it was bad. And he left that day, and uh, he just moved on. He left the body. Yes, he did. And he's telling me to tell you thank you for always being there for him. He's he's really um, makes me feel like you were very close to him, and um, that you gave him permission to go. And he's saying thank you for that. He has um, to do. Uh, I thank him for that, and I just want him to. He has to show my mom some signs. He has to, I know he's with her. I, she knows he's with him, but he has to, he, she, she needs that. She needs it more. See, if he could, if he could. Um, I see him in a kitchen chair. Did they spend a lot of time in the kitchen? Yes. Yeah, because I see him sitting in a kitchen. It's like a wooden back chair, like an open yeah. wooden back chair almost. And I see yes. him sitting there. So he's in the kitchen. Does she like to cook? Yes, 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 yes. So he's there in the kitchen with her is what he's showing me. That's great. All right, look out for her in the kitchen. Hopefully he doesn't burn nothing. Well, thank <laughs> you for coming in, babe. That was, uh, that was so, God, that's awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah and, and he he tells me, he said, you don't have to worry about him burning anything because she did all the cooking. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. All right, so okay. let's go on. We got somebody from the 917 area code. Hi there, how are you? Are you there? Seven, a uh, 917 area code, you there, Beth? Okay, well, what, what's going on for a short pair? Next, later. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the 210 area code. 210 area code. Hi there. Hi, Lisa. This is Mike from San Antonio. Hey, Mike. Hi. Oh, Mike. Yes, hi. Hey, thank you for taking my call, and I really appreciate everything that you've, you've done for my yeah, family. Yeah, um, of course, eh? Oh, my God. And I just, cool. I just, yeah, go uh, ahead. Um, yeah. yeah, I just uh, just a quick question for um, Michelle. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have a, I, I've been feeling like I've been more intuitive for the past maybe six months, a year. And mm-hmm. I wanted to know if, it's kind of a silly question, but if my coworker is a sibling from a past life. Um, yeah, there's a big connection. I, I know that. Yeah. Is mm-hmm. there, is there, is this a female? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm yes. getting a very big. Yeah, very big, yeah. Um, I, I, um, mm-hmm. Go ahead. It's quite strong and um, um, several lifetimes. Okay. But she didn't believe in, in all this stuff. So what does he do? I mean, what can he do with that knowledge? Because it's really um, I've, warming. I've like, had, I think, right? I've had dreams where I'm talking to her, and I've been told by other mediums the same thing that you told me. I just wanted to have validation, and they said that I'm telepathic at night, and I communicate. I've actually had dreams with past um, loved ones that pass over, and, and, and one of my dreams, um, it's kind of funny. She was pushing some shopping carts out in the grocery store, and I get out of my car, and there's a bunch of ones scattered, and I'm putting them together to give it back to her, and she's telling me telepathic, telepathically, why are you helping me out? The strong connection, like, I need to help her, and um, and every time she sees me at work, and not lately, but it's just a strange vibe, and it, it's it's so hard to explain. Yeah, it will, and and Eric saying it, it is it's complex, and he says that you are very very deep, be intuitive, and what that means is there's I'm sure you can understand that when I say this that there's many different layers to what you feel with this, and with other things as well. Um, mm. Your your connection has a um, the best way to describe it. He says karmic energy. So there are many different scenarios that you've had in different lifetimes, and you are helping her right now. 
um, because there is a lot that happens energetically between the two of you, Eric just said to relax on the feeling that you need to do something. Try to step back and relax Wait, on the feeling that you need to do something. Say what, say what again? Say, say that again, Michelle. Eric's just saying to try to take your mind off or relax the idea of feeling that you need to do something in the physical right That's now. That's what I told you, Mike. I know. I know. I, I'm a big Nobody listens to mama. Nobody listens to mama. <laughs> I, 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 sometimes you need to hear it in different directions. See, see it I'm the biggest. Sorry. Mike, you're going to tune into a lot of people, and it's because Lisa. Yes, ma'am. David is on. His area code is nine two eight. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Um, just one more, more quick question. Does she think of me as a, 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 a weirdo or strange? I mean, I... Eric says no, but he says, okay. um, that, but he says to back off on the physical because she's she's, she's not ready. She has, she, has a she has a connection to you too, but she. She's not ready. Like, she's not going to, you know, so Eric just says, really, just back off in the physical. Um, he goes, focus your energy in another direction. He says, I know it sounds like it's easier said than done, dude, but he says, focus on what the actual intuitive hits that you're getting, not on what the message is. So, anyway, so Eric, maybe you can... Yeah, maybe, maybe, Eric, you can sort of nudge this woman in the... In, the direction, whatever. But all right, thanks, Mike, for uh, calling in. Thanks, Mike. Okay, we got somebody from the four one five area code, and David is the nine two eight area code. You said? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm forgetful. All right, go ahead. Hi there, how are you doing? Hi, good. This is Anne in California. Hi, Anne from California. Hi, how are there. you? Um, good. Good. I've just been cleaning things out. I was cleaning out my closet when I was listening to the show and purging a lot of things while we have the time. God, can you come over to my house? I need you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. let me tell you, it, it took two months to get to this stage, so <laughs> I'm out Wait. of everything else. <laughs> <laughs> um. So... Are you um, doing a, a quick mediumship reading? No, no, just ask a question. Uh, who do you want to ask a question of? Eric, your higher self, um, Linda, Michelle, uh, uh, you know, your guides, uh, deceased loved one. Go for it, girl. Great. Um, I'll ask a question to uh, any guides about my next. I know I don't want it to be what my past job was before this started. I'm ready for a whole new area. Linda, you have anything there? Nope. No? Okay. Um, the very first thing that I heard when you had asked that was to make your intention clear. Eric's just saying that you don't want to, you know what you don't want to do that has thought deeply enough about what you want to do because he says there's the desire of some things that you would love to do, but there's that feeling of I'm not sure if I could do that or I'm not sure how I would do that. So he says, become clear, take the time right now to become clear on what it is that you really want to do because intention is that turning piece. Intention is that, that real strong piece that helps thrive into manifesting what you truly want. So you want to have something that aligns with you. So really put some thought into it and really put some thought into why do I want to do that? What's the benefit? How does it make me feel? Eric says get really comfortable in really knowing what you're attracted to, what you feel, and then put the confidence behind it that you can do it. You can make it happen. That's pretty cool. I like it. All right, well, thank you um, for can calling. You, can you repeat? Can you repeat something that she said? Because I only I can't hear what she said. Be clear of what I want, and that's 
I heard that part. Be clear in what you want. Um, but Eric just said to, to really think about what it is that you want, what you want to do. Because he says if you could hone in on one thing. You're really breaking you up a lot, Michelle. Michelle, you're really bold. Yeah, she is. Do you have headphones on? Yeah, I do. Okay. All right. It's fine. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, he was just, I'm sorry about that. Um, hopefully you can hear me clear enough. Yeah, he was just saying to be as clear as possible about what it is that your intention is or what you want to do. Um, said that there are a couple things that are within you or that you may not have full awareness of. Um, because he said, you know what you don't want, but do you really know what it is that you do want? So he okay. said he's taking a little time because what he's saying, this is a like a little uh, a hint. He says something that you think about that you'd like to do that maybe you're not quite sure of how you would get that. That's something that you can absolutely do because he said this is a new chapter, a whole new part of your life right now. So he says take wow. advantage of it. This is the opportunity. So don't worry I, about the how. Don't don't worry about the how and just focus that's on that's right. The... That's right. And okay. He, um, you have a you have a female guide that's with you right uh-huh. now. Some sort something to do with creativity. It's opening yeah. up in yeah. Wonderful. That's awesome. I, that's well, true. Sounds like you need a longer right. session with uh, Michelle. All right. Thank you for calling in. Thanks. You betcha. All right. Thanks so much. Sure, sweetie. All right. Let's go back to see if we can get uh, the person from the nine one seven area code because we couldn't. Um, reacher, so or him nine one six. Wait, okay, nine one seven area code. Hi, anybody there? Hello. Dang it. I guess. I'll, okay, let's look for David. Oh, I do have a question that Lucas got me a little post-it note and says. Okay, let me read it. Who were the gummy bear people that Michelle dreamed, you put dreamt, that's not a word, is it? Dreamed about when she was little. Michelle, his sister, I guess she's putting him up to this. Who were the gummy bear people that Michelle dreamed about when she was little? It's creepy. Oh, they were um, Eric says spirit guides, and that's how they presented themselves to her. Spirit guides? It was a, Mart- yes. Why did they present? as gummy bears. And she can relate to them. Yeah, yeah she loves sweet. Yeah, she loves sweet. So they're, yeah. they're benevolent, right? Yeah, to oh, show yeah. their kindness. And it was about, um, Eric says about the message, like about what the message was that she took away from it. What do you mean? Well, there was something... Um, something that was occurring, um, like he says, it sparked a feeling, it sparked something. So whatever was happening in her life at that time, it was a kind, like, hi, we're here. It's like opening ah. up this part of her, part of her brain, part of her mind. She was scared because she thought they were aliens. <laughs> well, <laughs> Eric just goes, they're her guides. And- we're all aliens. All right, so the yep. guys and kind of like as as, as she, gummy bears. Has, because, yeah. She has a galactic connection. She has a. a Wait, where now? You can feel that, Michelle. Say it again. There's a those the guides those beings. It feels like a galactic connection. That's what oh. Eric is saying. But so yeah, no. that that would be like a visitation. All right. Ooh, but Lucas is saying something. He said, yeah, she, um, she would feel. Like she would they feel would, she would lift, they'd lift her up and feel like her whole body is stretched. Well, they, they would lift her up and they would stretch her whole body. Like a gummy bear. Yeah. yeah. There's, she's, got, she's got it. There's her, her something in her, her um, Linda, I don't know if I could, DNA. There's something similar to what they are. It's like we're connected, and Eric's saying a contract. There's an agreement. Yeah. So yeah. These, are, these are guys that are showing up in different ways in her life, depending on where she's at. 
Well, that's interesting because she she's been having these dreams that apparently what what is a being is that she's got this parallel reality where she's a lieutenant in the galactic army trying to help with peace. So, um, oh, uh, cool. that makes sense. That makes a lot of so sense. that makes sense. So these these gummy bear people are her, the same race as she's in, I guess, yes. and they're just trying to guide her in this human life. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So what uh, what star system are they from? The gummy bear the star. star. The gummy bear star. Yeah. <laughs> I thought as much. Yeah, I'm know. not sure. I'm. I sounds like Sirius. Yeah, I think she is from Sirius. She actually has a, a group of moles uh, that are like uh, on her little tiny freckles, yeah. actually, on her arm. Yeah. That uh, is the Sirius constellation. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Enough about me and my kids. Let's go on to the next person. Oh, we need to find David. Okay, hang on, hang on. Um, David, David. Oh, here we go. Hi, David. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you, Alicia, for having me on. And Linda, I've enjoyed your show. Terrific, terrific. Oh, we can't wait to have you on and talk about your amazing well, book. Yeah, uh, it's winding down, and it'll, I hope to get it published very shortly. And uh, it's it's simply I'm not a psychic. I have no abilities or gifts or how we want to express it. So I had to start from the beginning. A lot of research about all the whole subject. Linda said is the first half is my research and getting familiar. Hello. I think we're done here. No, you're still going, honey. No, you're good. Okay. You're good. Okay. Uh, and the second half is about Linda. The first half is really a familiarization on my part to find out what it's all about, what all the yeah. stuff you guys are talking about. And uh, I list in the very beginning of the book the levels of awareness of readers. There might be skeptics or non believers all the way up to. Full believers, people who have a lot of uh, knowledge about psychics, spirits, and uh, mediums. Yeah. And it's about that, too. And then the second half is about Linda. Uh, and uh, we all started this. We're rather mature people, as you may know. Yeah. And it took some step uh, on our part. So the book is to familiarize people with no knowledge some with no knowledge, or some who are totally skeptics, right up to people who have a lot of knowledge, and then off into what Linda does about light language and uh, aliens and uh, well, way cool. out. That is so cool. All right, guys, we need to close now. Thank you, David, for that. We'll have you on the show. Uh, Linda, they can connect with you at what's the best way to connect? Uh, they can connect with me on my website, channelingbylindalee.com. All right. And uh, with Michelle, it's um, the healing H, letter H, dash A-R-T. And I will put that when I make this into a YouTube. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Michelle. I love you guys. You. And I love everybody who's listening and supporting me. I really appreciate it. And, um, I hope you guys donate to the Channeling Eric um, cause if you can. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Good night, Elisa. Good night, Elisa. Eric says love you guys. Oh, good night. Eric says love, love. Love, love, love. Love, love. Bye. Bye. Bye.